Hey you guys, it's Harrison and Evan from the Wildlife Brothers, and today we're doing something very special. So it's late summer now, almost autumn, and we wanted to come out to our favorite local park and try and find as many different species as we can. Now we have a special treat for you guys today, as well as a special treat for us. We're actually not out here alone. We're here with our good friend Chris Ignato, and he's actually going to introduce the challenge that we're doing today. So come on in, Chris. Yeah, cool. welcome. Hey guys. Good to see How you. you Great seeing you. Always. Awesome. How are you guys doing? So this is going to be kind of a fun adventure. I mean, we've got just under two hours, right? That's right. Yep. To try to find as many herbs, that's reptiles or amphibians, as possible. And we're going to be checking, you know, within a quarter mile radius. Pretty much, yeah. So it's going to be a tight, it's going to be a tight episode, guys. Yeah, and you know, it's a cloudy day. We've had a lot of rain lately. That's right. So that might have an impact on things. But being the transition between summer and fall, is a really interesting time that might have a really good impact on what we find. Yeah. All right, so let's get after it. Let's do it. So we're just waiting for Chris to arrive and we actually have the first northern water snake of the day. So I'm gonna head down there, see if I can get him. All right. Got him? Yep. Got him. Nice Woohoo! catch, all right. First snake of the day, here we go. Wow, he's a little feisty one. All right. all right. Hopefully Chris will, you're okay bud. Hopefully Chris will arrive soon. Hey, you're okay? You're okay little one. Now this is a northern water snake, an animal we have featured many times here on the Wildlife Brothers. He's a little bit jumpy, isn't he? Very much so. Now Chris will be arriving in a little bit, but we're really happy to have something to surprise him with. Wow, this guy's going nuts, he just bit himself. Now, they have very, very tough scales, so that's not gonna hurt him at all. Hey, bud. And you can see he's very defensive right now. It's actually late summer, as we told you guys. Hi. <laughs> so, it's actually not warm enough for the water snakes or any snakes out here to actually have enough energy to really run far away from us. So when I picked him up, his first instinct, without that energy to run away, was to fight. So you can see he's really going nuts at my shoe there. He wants to give me a big old bite but we're gonna uh, treat this guy very gently. He'll calm down in just a few minutes. Hey, bud. All right, bro, what are you doing? All right, so we, we just caught this little northern water snake earlier. I just caught another one, actually. Still waiting for Chris to arrive, so we're gonna have some awesome species to show him when he gets here. Sweet. Amid all the chaos of catching two snakes, Chris arrived. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys, how you doing? And we have all of our friends with us learning about water snakes today. Say hi, guys. Hi. Awesome. So we have lots of kids here that uh, usually when we catch snakes out here in the park it tends to generate a pretty big crowd. So we like to teach people about the animals, make sure that everyone knows enough to be safe and also respect these awesome species. Alright, so let's get started. All right. Always important to release them right back where you found them. So actually this guy I found right here by the plants. So I'm going to let him go. Got a shot of that? Yep, got him. And then this guy, little POV for all the herpers out there. This one goes out to Frederick Beck. See you later, bud. Bang. And away they go. So we reached our destination, huh, guys? Yeah, we did. We're here at the, the Boy Scout Bridge. This is actually where we filmed our video last time with Chris. So we're yeah. going to get down into the creek here and see what's moving around. As we were about to find out, the creek was filled with incredible animals today which was exactly what we were hoping to prove. Even when autumn has begun to take over in the deciduous woodlands, there are still many cool species to find if you know where to look. With our challenge in mind, we set off downstream and caught up with some very cool amphibians. The most important part of salamander hunting, guys, is you want to be really, really gentle. Even though you might have the tendency to want to grab onto him, there we go. If you can just get him, into your hands like this and use that kind of conveyor motion, you're not squeezing them. Now, as we know, salamanders can drop their tails. That's an ability called caudal autonomy. And that's actually not gonna kill him because the tail will grow back in a couple months to a year, but it does leave him a lot more vulnerable to a predator, something like a bird coming in trying to eat him. And it also is where they store a lot of their fat. So if they lose that tail coming onto autumn, that will actually cause them a lot of problems 
as they're starting to slow down their metabolism and get ready for winter. So why do they drop their tail in the first place? It's actually a defense mechanism. So say, for example, I was a big great blue heron and I wanted a quick snack. So I'd grab this guy by his tail, which is about half of the body length of this animal, so it seems like a good target. But once that bird latches on, he can actually drop that whole tail off, mostly as a defense mechanism. He's, uh, so I tried to go for a leap of faith there, but there he is. That's your northern two-line salamander. Beautiful coloration for this time of year. Yeah, so then it distracts the, the predator because it's got this little wriggly tail in its mouth because the tail will continue to wiggle as it's detached. And well, there at he the goes. same time, they have a bit of a snack too, so. And there's your release, guys. Right in here. Oh, he's gone. Good stuff. Go ahead. Oh, missed him. Got him. You got him? Uh, barely. Got him. Green frog. Nice. You got a green? Changed my mind three times about what he was. Wait until you see the coloration of this guy. I think it's a green. Lithobates clamatans. Yep. Just the green. Wow. All right, Lithobates keep it right there. Coloration. Yeah. You can see why I originally called him a pickerel frog, because as we know, pickerel frogs have those spots on him. But this is just a particularly dark green frog. As I said, Lithobates clamatans. Beautiful little guy. Now he is a small one for the species. I expect we'll be seeing a lot of small amphibians. What do you think, Chris? Oh, definitely, definitely. And I think that the pickerels we'll be finding will probably be about that size or a little smaller. Yeah. Now it's uh, these little frogs that need to build up their energy as we've been talking about throughout the video before uh, autumn hits and food becomes a little more scarce. How you doing, buddy? What you got? Well, nice. Now we have Little common toad. Let's see if he will calm down a little bit. Oh, he's peeing on me. That is their primary defense mechanism. Take a look at him. This is actually pretty decent size as far as we've seen today. Now that looks like, is that a Fowler's toad or an American toad? No, that's yeah. an American. So the way you can tell the difference is by looking at their belly, Fowler's toads are gonna have a lot of darker spots on their belly, whereas the American toad is mostly pale and kind of tan. Nice. So. You can see how well they blend in with the rocks. We just managed to spot this guy heading up the trail a bit. Sweet. What do you think, Chris? Um, actually, I have an idea. Let me, let me see thing. this little fella for a there second. There Is he telling you to subscribe to Chris Ignato Nature Now on YouTube? <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, I don't really like your channel. You gotta <laughs> let me go. Now, look at here. You see these two? Sorry, little guy. I'm gonna just hold them like this. See these two? larger warts behind the eye? Yeah. Those are the paratoid or parotid glands. Now, those are filled with a neurotoxin. And if you just squeeze them ever so slightly, all this white mucus comes ah, out. Good catch. Good catch. Thanks. And uh, if that gets into a predator's mouth, it could cause burning and frothing, dizziness, and sometimes even death. You never know what's gonna happen. If you have a pet dog or something, Sometimes it doesn't face them at all, and other times it does. Wow. But amazing species. So we're gonna let this little guy go. Pretty sure it's a male. Now at this point in the day, our two hour time limit was coming up fast, and there was still one species that had eluded us for the whole adventure, the pickerel frog. This species is usually very common, but after multiple failed attempts, we weren't sure that we were going to get one to close off the episode. But if there's one thing we've learned by hanging out with Chris, it's that he's always full of surprises. And I wish we had You got, got one! Video. Yeah, we got ourselves a uh, pickerel frog. Now we've seen many of these today, but they're so... Fast? Yeah, so fast and skittish. Now if you got the right kind of lighting, especially if the sun was out, you'd notice that skin is actually a nice coppery bronze. And the difference with pickerel frogs and leopard frogs, the easiest difference to spot is if you look at those spots on the back, they're actually kind of organized into two rows, or at least loosely organized in some individuals. Whereas the leopard frogs, they're very sporadic. There's no organization whatsoever. And I know this is a male pickerel frog because it just did a release call as I was holding it. Oh, wow. Now, being pickerel frogs, they are toxic species. Holding them and stuff, we're okay. This isn't the jungle. But if you were to handle this amphibian 
and then say handle a uh, green frog or a redback salamander, you could actually harm that species. This toxin on their skin, I believe might be a neurotoxin, and it does burn and things like that. So if you put these in a bucket and then put another species in the same bucket with it, you could be causing the other species some discomfort. And a really wonderful indicator of that toxin, a warning basically, is inside these legs, you have this bright flash of yellow. If you extend the leg, you'll see that the inside and part of the underside is this vibrant yellow. And that has a two-fold strategy. One, it warns predators, hey, I'm toxic. It's aposomatic coloration. Two, it can actually startle the predator. I'm reaching behind it as a, a bird or a fox or something to take a bite, and then this frog jumps away. I see a bright flash of yellow where I once saw black and green. And it's a bit of a surprise. It buys that frog an extra half second. And as you know, all it takes is half a second before these frogs oh, slip yeah. away into the, the never world. We've said it before and we'll say it again, guys. Getting to work alongside Chris Agnato is always a pleasure. His knowledge, passion, and infectious energy make him a treat to herp with. And every time we hit the woods together, we know we're in store for a great time. For an expedition that lasted less than two hours, I'd say we were pretty successful. But what did you guys think? This episode is pretty different from the content we've been releasing recently. So did you enjoy it? Would you like to see more collaborations on the channel? Tell us about it in the comments below. Also, we can't emphasize enough that Chris's channel, Nature Now, is absolutely amazing. We've provided a link in the description, so go subscribe and give him some love. And remember to subscribe to the Wildlife Brothers as well. We have a ton of content that we're super excited to release, so stay tuned so you catch all of that content as it comes out. See you later, guys!